Hello and welcome to Single Parent Success Stories. Today's guest is Amy Stone. She is a life coach for step parents and adults in blended families. She is a stepmom and a mom of two step kids and two biological kids. She's joining us from Florida. Welcome, Amy. It is a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Arena. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So please tell us who you are. How did you uh, become a life coach for step parents and adults? Oh, that's a wonderful question. I love to share this story. So I became a life coach. Um, I was a look, it was more recent than when I became a step parent. Um, I became a step parent more than 20 years ago uh, when I started dating and then married somebody who was divorced and had children. Um, and so I've been a step parent for a long time. I added two kids to the big blended family. Those are my biological kids, and those kids are also young adults. So I became a life coach actually looking for information and knowledge and training to help me understand people with their motivation and their overwhelm and um, things like that. I was working as a, a coach for runners and triathletes because running and triathlon is a personal hobby of mine. And I was looking for tools to help. And I took a life coaching course because I have worked with life coaches in the past and they've been very helpful. And I realized I didn't know how to do that. Along the way, any of your listeners who've ever gone through this path of self-development will realize that any of these certifications really are journeys for ourselves. And so along the way, I realized what a powerful shift it is to be able to help people um, with that. So it was a self-awakening of how I could help people in a deeper way. And when I looked at the skills that I had and what I was able to do, and who I would be able to help, I realized, and this is something that business coaches help people with all the time, that I did have a very specific life experience and skill set for an unsupported group. Um, and those are divorced parents and um, blended families. Like I live in a blended family and have for a long time. I have that experience of working through my tools, my situations there. My parents were both single parents. So I was the child of single parents. Um, and while I have not gone through divorce, I don't coach people through divorce. So that's not my lived experience. I hope I help a lot of people who are in families after divorce. So it's a, an interesting situation. So I hope that answered the question. That's how I got here and what I do, what I do. Yeah, that's incredible. And and I think because I called, usually when we're growing up, we don't plan that we're going to divorce. We have this fairy tale of, of life that we're going to grow up. We're going to have a family. We're going to have kids and husband and wife. And so we are not really prepared for what's to come afterwards. So I think what you do is very, very important. And I appreciate you for that. Thank what, you. What makes you happy? What makes me happy? Oh, that's a great question. Um, what makes me happy is uh, I very much am an independent type person. So I love when I'm in a situation where I know that I have... <laughs> I'm in control of what I'm doing. Um, I love to be outside. Um, my current passion at the moment is I have a paddleboard. Um, and so I'm doing stand up paddleboarding on the water. I find that very relaxing. And I just bought myself a little scooter, a little bad electric scooter. I'm scootering around my neighborhood to do things. So then I don't have to find a parking space. Um, and every time I do that arena, every time I go somewhere and don't have to find a parking space, I get like this little bolt of joy. I'm like, like I've beaten the system. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have to find a parking space. I'm so excited. Awesome. <laughs> Do you usually have problems with parking in, in Miami? Oh, yeah. The, you know, we it's a very busy car-centered um, city. And so, and I live in a, um, there's a lot of tourist type area. And so there, there are often parking spaces, but we, you know, we pay for parking. And it's just, I don't know. I grew up in a city where I didn't even have a car. Um, and so maybe I'm overly sensitive to it. But if I can walk or bike or scooter somewhere, I'm usually a little bit happier. Awesome. Awesome. How do you help people? How do I personally help people? So I work with people right now one-on-one -on -one as a coach. Um, and so I work with people and just, we talk, right? Mm -hmm. Coaching is sometimes a little bit um, challenging to understand how how and why it works um, for people who have not worked with a coach. Um, and a coach is not somebody who solves the problems. 
right? But offers sometimes a new perspective, helps you see what you are not necessarily aware of in your situation. Um, and that's sort of a nebulous thing to understand. But the description of it that I give is that say you're standing side by side with somebody and you're looking at something in the horizon, like say um, something small, like a bit of wildlife or a shooting star or something. And you're both standing shoulder to shoulder, but one of you sees it and the other one doesn't, right? And in order to see it, the other person just kind of has to say, no, no, turn a little bit this way. And there it is. And that's a little bit about what a coach does. A coach like listens to what's going on, is aware of the situation, takes the information in, but because they are detached and trained as a coach, they're sometimes able to offer you a different perspective that helps you step through whatever you're going through. Um, and when I work with adults in blended families, so that's stepmoms and parents who are married to somebody who maybe does or doesn't have kids or has been divorced or whatever, because I have experienced similar things or I'm aware of the situations, I sometimes have a distance on the perspective to say, hey, could you think about it this way? Or what do you think about that? And, and that helps them move through the challenges in their life. What are some of the common problems that you, you see? What so in, um, um, in blended families, it's interesting that you mentioned earlier fairy tales. Um, so the number one thing that people experience, and I think this happens in all relationships actually, but it's highlighted um, and maybe like sort of exponentially faster in a blended family is that we have an idea of what our life will be like in our family and where that idea comes from can be very different for everybody, right? Maybe we're using what our parents' relationship was like as a, an example. Maybe we have an example that we've put together from watching TV and movies and reading books. Maybe we just have an example that we've cooked up in our own head. But we have, we have a preconception of what married life will be like, what family life will be like, what parenthood will be like, what step parenthood will be like, what, what this experience will be like, you know, happily ever after. And then we discover in the day-to-day -day life of it that it's not that, right? It's not that. It's not what we are experiencing. And maybe we don't know how to get to what we want. So then we have a, you know, you've got stress, you've got chaos, you've got anger, you've got confusion, right? All of those things boiling up. And a lot of times there's overwhelm. People are feeling overwhelmed if they don't know it. And we don't necessarily like the choices that we're aware of. So people will feel like they're judging themselves, like they've made a really bad decision. Like, oh gosh, what did I do? Why did I do this? Um, they maybe don't feel like there's a path out. Um, they maybe don't feel like people, they may feel outsiders. They don't feel like they are, they're judging themselves. All of those things come up and um, and that's what brings people. So it generally, it generally is a sense of like dissatisfaction and disempowerment is what brings people like, I want to feel better um, and be happier in my family. I thought I could be happy. I really did want this. And now I'm not happy. Like, what do I do? How do I get happy? And the reason I say it that way is because I'm a life coach, right? I'm not a therapist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a counselor, right? I'm not going to diagnose you. Um, I'm not going to do anything like that. My interest is in helping people be happy in their situation. And one of the reasons I'm so committed to this is that there are very few people standing up and saying, hey, if you'd like to be helpful, I will try and guide you along. I mean, if you'd like to be happy, I would like to you know, stand beside you and guide you there. There are a lot of people who will say, hey, you know what? This is really hard. This is really hard. Would you look at how hard this is? You should just quit. You should just stop and start over. There's a lot of that message in the family world, right? Just kick them to the curb, walk away, put up your boundaries, start again. And there's very few people saying, hey, if you want to try and be happy in this situation, here are some things you can try. And that's what I do. Yeah. Yes. You're so right. We, we give up too, too soon, too easy. It's the only option we see. You know, it's the only option we see. I mean, I'm not, I, I certainly hope that doesn't sound like I'm judging people who do decide to step away. Um, I'm, there are a million times where that is exactly the thing that needs to happen. Growing up in, in a, you said you were growing up in a single family uh, household. What were some of the things 
you were missing or it was everything how you liked it if you were like oh. go back in time and give advice to your parents when if they were <laughs> raising you Oh gosh, that's a really um that's a really good question. So my parents got divorced when I was very very young. Um and neither one of them remarried. So I am one of those kids who has really no memories of my parents being married. Um so my um and so I had a pri- my they also live thousands of miles apart from each other. Like I, they lived in different states. So they were individuals. So I had it, there's one part of me that feels like I never knew anything else. That was my lived experience, right? Um, which is true. Um, and I had to reconcile that when I was building my own family and my own relationship because I literally did not have a lived example of a strong married partnership, right? I had to acknowledge that and be like, oh, geez, I don't actually know what this is, right? Because I had never seen it. Um, and the second part of that is that as an adult, I have really had to process that the reasons for my parents' divorce were their own and they were valid, right? So, but yeah, I grew up really wishing that um, that I had two parents. I really, I really felt like my life would have been so much easier and so much better and so much less stressful if I didn't have to bounce back and forth between these two houses, um, if I didn't have to split my holidays, if I didn't have to do all of those things. And I definitely, definitely lived that. And that does my experience as a kid of divorced parents um, and my parents' divorce was I didn't know these words until I got into the business. My parents' divorce was high conflict. Their relationship was high conflict, right? So um, so that is that. So when I'm working with families and we're talking about divorced kids and blending families, sometimes I bring that experience in as a, you know, as a, a reason, because I remember not wanting to go to the other house. I, I mean, I remember not wanting to have anything to do with it. Just like, ah. Okay. Any, anything else? Any other? No, other? I mean, I guess I, there's lots of times if you had asked me that question 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago, I would have had a different answer because there were times in my life where I very, very much wanted to go back and tell my parents that they should have done things differently. Um, one of the things that I've realized as I get older is that most of this work comes back to dealing with um, how we are, like fixing ourselves and healing ourselves. And so at this point in my life, I'm not in a spot where I want to go back and tell my parents that they should have done things differently. Um, I th- there, there were years where I had a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, a lot of rage where I, I did do that. We had big fights as adults where I said, why, how could you have ever done this to me? Yeah, I've had all of those feelings. They're all valid. But today, um, today I've made peace with it. Right. Good. Good. What helped you resolve the anger and all of those things? Interestingly, one of the things that is very uh, helpful, not in an easy way, but having children and being in a position to hold a marriage together and parent those children and realizing how hard that is, is one of the things that forced me to reconcile my relationship, my version of my relationship to my parents. Um, because it is hard and, and, you know, we go through life and we experience life as a child. And then as a parent, you have to either face that and make different decisions. They call that breaking generational cycles, um, or not, and just, you know, necessarily repeat them or like unconsciously repeat them. Um, and so as I stepped into the role of wife and stepmother and mother, I went through the process of you know, reconciling what I did for a long time. My parenting strategy definitely was do things just as long as they weren't the way my parents had done them, it must be fine. Um, and that's not always a great way to make a decision. It was not a horrible starting point. I will be honest, you know, because they did some things that were really wacky, but, um, but I had to get to the point where I had done enough of my own work to release the fact that I, to realize that I wasn't them. Like I wasn't them and I could do things my own way. And, and that can be empowering and also really scary. It's a lot easier to point the finger at somebody else and say, you know what, you did this wrong. And all of the problems in my life are because of the way you did this. And it's much harder to say, okay, I didn't like that. And I didn't like what happened and it hurt. But now if I let that go, what do I want to do as an adult in my own life? How do I want to build a life that I want to be a part of? Does that answer the question? Definitely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
What advice can you give for single parents who are just stepping onto the journey? So I have to admit that I've never been a single parent, right? So I want to I want to acknowledge that in um, in openness. I don't want to pretend to be doing something that I'm not. Um, but we did. You did tell me that we were going to talk about this um, before beforehand, and so I've done some thinking about it. Um, and so one of the things, and what, what as a life coach, one of the things I specialize in is what's called a reframe or a shift, right? Um, and that is that um, when when you bring me a situation in your life, um, I will try and offer you a slight turn to see if it's helpful to help you move through it, right? So if you are looking for ways as a single parent to feel better, right, um, then I might give you a reframe that will help redirect you into a more joyous, happy direction for you. And the power of that often is um, directly related to the information that comes from the person. So today we're going to talk about it in a general sense, right? But some of these will hit on the mark and some of them won't because it's like super general. And the problem with really general advice is that if it doesn't match your situation, it's like not helpful, you know? So if you come to me and say, hey, you know, here's my situation and I offer you a reframe, that's often very helpful. But if it doesn't match, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And that's when, that's why working one-on-one -on -one with someone can be so much more powerful than taking a course, reading a book, listening to a podcast, reading an article. Sometimes when those things match up, it's like amazing right? You read what somebody wrote and they're like, oh my God, that's an exact match for what I needed. That's exactly what I need. But one of the things, like when we talk about like um, help for parents, single parents um, who are just starting out, right? And one of the things that as I was thinking about this that I want to acknowledge is that there's a lot of different reasons that people are single parents, right? There's an, probably an infinite reason. And the reasons impact how we feel about the situation. So if you're a single parent because you got divorced, you're going to feel one way. Um, if you're a single parent because you're widowed, that's a different situation. Maybe you're a single parent because you have um, a partner who is ill um, or even deployed in the military and just unavailable, right? So those are just a couple that I thought of, right? And then there's also the person who's single parent by choice, right? Like we got several friends that are single parents by choice. And that's where I want to start, right? Because as a single parent, one of the things that I think is really amazing is that you get to make the choices by yourself, right? You get to make the choices by yourself. Now, when I say that, some of the people listening are like, yes, that's right. And other people are listening are like, no, but I don't want to make all the choices by myself, right? Like, because making choices by yourself can be like, oh, why do I have to decide? Why do I have to decide? Why is it all on me? And both of those things are true. Both of those things are true. You are so right. <laughs> uh, we also talked about, you know, some of the tips, how to love your life as a single parent. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was the, that, so I gave you the first one there, how to love your life. And remind yourself that you are the person who gets the choice. You don't get to do that without interference um, yep. from other people, right? Um, and also, though, without um, any help, right? So, and when you go through that, right? So when you're going through that, it's good to, like, it's helpful to check in on what you really, really want, right? What do you what do you want right now? What's the choice that you're making and what do you want, right? Um, so that's that. So um, have you ever been in a position where you're frustrated because you have to make all the choices? No. Okay. No, you love making all the choices. You don't ever want, that's good. That's really good. You are like absolutely ideal for this. All right, that's very, very good. In the beginning, that's very empowered. Yeah, in, in the, the beginning. beginning yeah, because I've been, uh, it's my eighth year. Uh, okay. In the beginning, yeah, it was challenging. It was like, you know, am I making the right decision? Not, not that I have to make it by myself, but am I making the right decision? Like if I were, if I had a looking glass and I was able to see five, 10 years down the road, is this yes. the good decision to make? <laughs> yeah, no, the pressure of making a decision by yourself can be, can be intense. And so that like, but you are the one who makes the decision. And one of the things about that pressure is that some of it is self-inflicted, right? Because if you, even if you have somebody to have make that decision with you, you are always going to make the decision by yourself. There's only one person inside your brain, right? So there's other information and other things like that, but you get to make the choice yourself and reminding yourself that that was always true. There's never a time where that's not true is the thing that I would offer to people who are struggling with that. 
Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So then the, uh, aligned with that, one of the things is really, really interesting, right? Even when you have a partner, right? So even when you're married or in you're in a relationship and so on and so forth, each of us is actually totally independent, right? We occupy our own space. We walk on our own. We stand on our own. We sit on our own. We sleep on our own. We maybe, you know, have somebody next to us, but that independence is actually always there. And so the reason I think that this is a good thing to keep in mind when you're making the choice to do something by yourself is that it's my belief, my opinion, that it's the search for something that doesn't actually exist that causes the discontent, right? So if you have an idea that there is some sort of situation where you are not like in this independent state, like if you have this idea that there's some form of life where there's like somebody else who's always helping you with these things, that by itself causes resistance, right? And so when you release that and you remember, you're like, all right, I'm always doing these. I'm feeding myself unless like, like, unless you're in a situation where you cannot do those things, in which case you need, you know, aid, right? I'm always in the situation where I'm doing these things, right? So so there's not like usually a spot that somebody is always doing that. And so then that brings you back to the question of what is it that you're really looking for? Like what what is causing the resistance about the fear and the um, unhappiness about being signaled, right? And so that will lead you to where you might want to get support and help, right? Um, And for people who have been um, in a relationship that they ended, Um, I'll just throw this in because I work with people who are in blended families and a lot of times there is a divorce there. Um, One or one or both of the people were were divorced. One of the things that's very fascinating and we know this, right? We know this from research that if you, whatever happens in one relationship is very likely to repeat in the next relationship if it's not resolved, right? So when you've got patterns of behavior, those things carry forward into our future relationships if we don't deal with them, right? So what's super interesting that, about that is that if you are a divorced single parent and you are feeling resistance because you, you know, are unhappy making choices, if you think back to your marriage, often there was conflict in the marriage over who would make the choices. It's really, really interesting. It's really, really interesting. Um, so that's, that's where, so that's the second one. Like always remember that no matter what, you're always on your own two feet. Yes, Totally. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So that's, um, that, so that is that, um, you want me to go to the third one? Sorry. You want me to go to the third one? Go ahead. Yes. please. All right. Very good. The last one, which I think is the, like the, the deal breaker, right? The good one, right? I saved the best for last kind of thing Mm -hmm. is that you don't need to be married or in a relationship to be supported. Right. So this goes back to the idea of the fairy tale right? If you're holding on to the idea that the only way to get support as a single parent is to be married or to be in a relationship, then that idea, holding on to that idea can help you, can put you in a spot where you're feeling discontent and disempowered, right? But there are lots of ways to get support, right? And once you identify the thing, places that you need support, I would never want to tell, tell somebody that's not an insane amount of work to be a single parent or a parent of any kind, right? Like it's a huge thing. We don't walk through this journey of parenthood or step parent like without needing assistance. And depending on our own family situations, our own community situations, who we have available to support us is completely different. But if you release the idea that it needs to be a romantic or um, married partner, then when you release that, then you're able to see like, okay, if what I need is help cleaning the house, how can I get that? If what I need is help getting running errands, how do I get that? If what I need is somebody to go and take these screaming toddlers away for five hours, how do I do that? Right? Like if what I need is help with discipline, how do I do that? If we release the idea that that has to be a married partner, then it opens up the chance to, to figure out what the next step is. Yep. They say it takes a village to raise a child. It does. And I'm always wondering when the village shows up. It was very disheartening for me to realize that I had to go out and find them. (laughs) Did you have a village growing up? 
I, you know, I did, I wouldn't have known that when, um, when I was going through it, but sure. Absolutely. Like, so, um, I mean, it, it's, you have to like the, it's, I mean, it's different as a kid. So, but yeah, I had school, I had, um, after school activities. I had, um, I, I was raised in a, a faith community. So I had a church community, my parent that my dad took us to, um, his friends, um, and uh, like his activities and all the people who are around for that. Those were people who were part of the village. I would not have said that I understood that as a child, right? Uh, you know, the people I saw every day, I, I grew up in a big city. So like, you know, the people who I asked for help and who knew who I was, those were all the village that were there. It just wasn't, um, uh, my dad was an only child and his parents were both dead by the time I was born. So it was really not people who were family. Um, it was, you know, Mr. Rogers neighborhood, like the people in the street and the teachers and the um, friends and the shopkeepers and the coaches, those were the village that were around. And I didn't, I don't know that I was aware of it um, as a, as a kid, but mm -hmm. as an adult, I can look back and say, Hey, that's the village. Who was your role model when you were growing up? Oh gosh. Um, that's a crazy question. Who is my role model growing up? I think it depends on, um, I'm not sure, not sure that I ever had like one specific role model. It would depend on how old I was, like what I wanted to do. Definitely when I was in college, I wanted to grow up and be Oprah. Um, I thought that that would be a good gig. Um, I mean, she really, really seems like she had a really great, she just, I mean, it's like, ah, everything, you know, <laughs> Um, there were times where I wanted to grow up and be like, you know, athletes and things like that. It would depend on how old I was. I don't know. I'm paused at that question. I should have had it like so, but no, I don't have a good answer. That's all right. <laughs> like kind of your conversation on the village kind of spurred that question along. Like, you know, what, what was there a person that you kind of emulated or wanted to be like? No, I don't think there was. I don't think there always was. And I think that that did, I mean, probably that, um, I mean, I probably at various points wanted to be different parts of my dad, um, as you do, but I don't think I was aware of it. Um, or maybe I was, I have no idea. The, um, but definitely that's one of the things that showed up when I was then a wife and a stepmom and a mom is that I had to go out and like figure out who did I want to be. Um, and there was definitely, that probably is not true for, for everybody out there, but I, for me, I had to like shop it and be like, all right, if I acknowledge that I don't have this example, who do I want to, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. Any fun projects you're working on that you like to share? Oh, that's a wonderful, fun question. I actually just finished a really fun project. So I'll talk about that instead, because this week I'm like sort of re um, sort of transitioning and I don't quite have decided what the next project I'm going to do, but I did a virtual summit for um, adults and blended families, right? All about going back to school. So um, back to school, school is like when you talk about community in the village, right? School is a child's community. Um, and the transition of going to school every single year is yeah, it's chaos, right? It's a very, very intense process. And in uh, single parent homes, divorced home, like um, co-parenting households, like combination households, blended families where there are step parents, it can be a lot more complicated. And um, as I was reflecting, I sent a kid off to college this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kid number three or four. Um, and I was th reflecting on the fact that like, it is more complicated in a lot of families. And I was watching like the ads on TV and was like, you know, yeah, back to school shopping. Yay. And I was like, it's, sometimes it's a lot more complicated and there's nobody talking about it. Like, where are the resources for people who don't fit into this, you know, box that none of us fit in? I don't understand why we keep pretending that this is like every, you know, if we know that, you know, 60 to 70% of the American kids are in houses that are divorced, not living with their parents, blended families. If we know that, why do we keep pretending that that's not the situation at school? Like, why are we not talking about it? But we don't talk about it. So, um, so I wrote um, an article about it. And then I put together a little virtual summit, which is that I invited other parents to come and talk about it. So um, there was a full day of presentations of all different things that revolved around back to school. It was great. People signed up. They really got a lot out of it. And that I just wrapped that up. Um, and so that's what I just completed. What my next project will be, I don't know. <laughs> that's up to this week. I'm going to decide. Awesome. Sounds exciting. It was pretty Is good. there anything I haven't asked that you like to share? I don't think so. This has been a wonderful conversation. Awesome. If people would love to connect with you, where would they go? 
Oh, I, let me tell you, I love, this is my favorite question of the whole show because I do love to tell people how to reach me. So my name is Amy Stone um, and I'm a life coach. We talked about that. The name of my business um, is Amy Says So, which is a play on the old thing because I say so, because mom says so, do it because I say so. So Amy Says So. And so amysaysso.com is my website, which is where um, I try to put everything, right? I am also on Instagram and I'm also on Facebook. And those, if you're in those places, you can definitely find me there. Um, I do have a quiz on the homepage of my um, website, amysaysso.com, which is where you can go through and answer questions about your family and figure out where it will come back and it'll tell you, it'll say, these are the strengths of your family and these are the weaknesses of your family. Like this is where it is. The reason I made that is because a lot of times we think that and in a single parent, we think that it's other people causing our problems, right? So in a single parent household, we think it's the ex, we think it's the kids, we think it's the mother-in-law, whatever, right? It's always somebody else, right? Sometimes that's a reflection of where it is. It may not be you. Like, I'm not saying it's you, but, you know, it's like, we think the problem is over here. And when you figure out, when you fill out the quiz, it says, oh, you know what? What you can work on is this. And it's really, really helpful. So I invite people to come and do it. It's free. It's no, comp you know, there's nothing, nothing there. But that's at amysaysso.com. I love that quiz. And I resonate with that as well, because I believe we all reflections of each other and the kids and the family and the husband, the spouse or ex-spouse is just reflecting back to us what we have on the inside, what we cannot see because we're on the inside. So they show it yes. to us. Front. It's very, very challenging when we learn that, that the thing that sets us off is not what other people are actually doing, but that it's reflecting back to us. We don't, we don't like. So thank you so much for coming on, sharing your wisdom with us. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you.